Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. So a new version of Isotope RX just got released, RX-8. Uh, if you don't know, RX is kind of like the industry standard noise reduction suite. Uh, it's just a, a large uh, group of tools for making audio sound better. Um, as a samplist, uh, depending on which version of RX you have, uh, the module, the specific tool that you will be using the most will either be voice denoise or spectral denoise. Uh, they're both dead simple to use and yeah, extremely effective. But this video isn't about those. This video is actually about the new features in RX. So uh, yeah, let's check them out. So there are a lot of new features uh, in this release. And instead of just kind of like rattling them off, um, which I, I don't think anyone would be able to retain that anyway, uh, I figured it'd be better to just go through some real world scenarios. So I've culled from the treasure trove that is my hard drive, a bunch of really crummy pieces of audio that I figured could use to be cleaned up. Uh, and I found uh, some random blues riff that I did a while back with a terrible hum problem. And uh, yeah, you can see it right here. And uh, just like a lot of amp noise. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see what we can do with RX. Uh, okay, I'm gonna put my headphones on because it's just a lot easier to do audio work when you can really hear things, uh, especially the high end. Uh, you can't really pick it up on these monitors. Uh, okay, I'm gonna play uh, the uh, the riff as it is. So yeah, uh, it has a bunch of problems. Uh, it has uh, yeah, loud amp noise. And on top of the amp noise, I don't know if you can tell, but there's actually two different things happening there. There's the amp noise and then there's hum. Uh, the hum actually comes from uh, bad power that was being fed into the amp, uh, and it was causing the power supply on the amp to hum. Obviously, it's a useless take unless I'm able to clean it up with RX. So we're gonna open up dhum. dhum is not a new module, it's one that's been improved in this version. Uh, and I believe it's in all three versions of RX. It works actually in much the same way that um, voice denoise or spectral denoise works. Uh, basically there's a learn button and you teach it what sound you want it to remove. So you choose a chunk of sound like this that doesn't have any of the actual note content in it. And we're gonna play it back. Okay, so it's just the buzz. And I'm gonna do learn. And there it says detected hum frequency, 60 hertz, as we expected. Many harmonics detected. Uh, use of denoiser is recommended. Okay, well, let's see what happens if we just do this. Um, and we're probably gonna do a denoiser anyway at some point, so. Okay, so we can see it actually got rid of all of these harmonics. So let's hear what's happening. So actually, uh, even though it said to use denoiser, that actually did get rid of all of the low end hum. So I actually think we could use another tool before we go to the actual regular spectral denoise. Uh, and I'm gonna go with guitar denoise. Guitar denoise is a new module. Uh, it's not in elements, it is in standard and advanced. I'm gonna choose a chunk of audio that just has that amp signal, let's hear it. Okay, I'm gonna teach it, learn. It says amp noise profile learned. And uh, yeah, let's just uh, go for it. Oh, that got rid of a lot of frequencies. Let's <laughs> see if it left any guitar. So already it's sounding way, way better. Uh, obviously there's still like some high pitched hiss and for that, we're actually gonna just use spectral denoise. I don't know of any other tool that's gonna work as well. Spectral denoise is of course the samplist's best friend, uh, classic tool. And we're gonna hit learn just as we did. And all of these tools are kind of designed to be kind of like set it and forget it. You don't really need to tinker too much with them unless you really know what you're doing. Here in spectral denoise, you can uh, set a curve to decide uh, which parts of the frequency range you want to do the reduction on. I'm just gonna leave it as is. Make sure that I don't have anything sele selected. Pretty good. Um, especially impressed with the guitar denoise because it got rid of the amp sound. Uh, and it's kind of fascinating when you you know, undo and you can see the 
aspects of the sound that were removed in each of the progressive steps. So this was the denoise, and then this was the amp signal removal, got rid of all of these banded, and this was the hum removal. So yeah, in three steps, we got a totally usable guitar take. Um, yeah, not bad. Okay, let's check out some other modules. So the next example I was thinking of working with in this video uh, is actually a voice recording. Uh, a while back, I was doing a podcast uh, interview about glass harmonicas, actually. And I interviewed this professor about, um, yeah, he'd written a book about glass harmonicas. And uh, yeah, so I've got a little snippet of the dialogue. And we talked via Skype. I recorded his end. I recorded my end. My end sounds great because I recorded it with a nice condenser microphone. His end kind of sounds like a Skype recording. Uh, here, you can hear the little snippet. It's kind of like a pluck and release thing, like the violin when you play it. It's not just like holding your fingers and rubbing and getting that catch. Okay, so there's not a lot of noise, but uh, as you can see from the frequency graph, it basically just stops at about 4,000, maybe 4,500 hertz. Um, yeah, there's just nothing in the upper end at all. And that's what makes it sound like he's on a conference call. So the advanced version of RX actually has a tool called Spectral Recovery. and it's designed for exactly this situation where you've got uh, a lot of frequencies missing, especially from the high end. It basically uses like a fancy algorithm to synthesize those frequencies so that it sounds a little bit more natural. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do learn on this. Okay, I'm going to hit compare and then it's going to generate a preview version and then we'll be able to listen. Here's the original version. It's kind of like a pluck and release thing, like the violin. And here's the fixed version. It's kind of like a pluck and release thing, like the violin when you play it. It's not just like holding your fingers and rubbing and getting that catch. So pretty good. Uh, obviously, it adds some sibilance into it, and you can actually dial back the sibilance a little bit uh, using this fader here. Um, but yeah, definitely an improvement. Um, Another thing that I'm going to do since this is a voice recording is I'm going to use Leveler, which is a module that's kind of like a compressor, but it's sort of like an intelligent compressor uh, that guarantees a specific signal level. Uh, here we go. I believe that's only available in Standard and Advanced. Leveler actually has a podcast interview setting, which is very useful, and you can just do set clip gain. And yeah, it's designed to kind of boost the signal and apply a little bit of compression, but in a way that doesn't have like weird, awkward pumping, which can always be a problem with uh, this kind of source material. It's kind of like a pluck and release thing, like the violin when you play it. It's not just like holding your fingers and rubbing and getting that catch. Okay, onward. Okay, so one of my favorite features in RX is the batch processor. Uh, it's, yeah, for me, it's worth the price of admission, uh, like on its own. Basically, it just allows you to apply the same effects to a large group of files, which, yeah, if you're making samples, is pretty helpful. Uh, for example, if you discover that they're all way too soft, you can boost their volumes, uh, and it's extremely quick. If you want to do noise reduction on a large set of samples and you actually have a, a sample of the silence, uh, you can throw an entire directory at it, and it works wonderfully. Uh, also, you can use external plugins. For example, if you have an EQ that you really like or something like that, you can apply it to all your samples in one fell swoop and it just really speeds things up. Okay, if you're used to the batch processor in RX-7, you'll notice that this is a little bit different. They've kind of reorganized it a little bit. Uh, the file list is on the left-hand side now. And uh, here I'm going to choose some glockenspiel hits that are not RX'd yet. And we can try RXing them. pull up the settings. I'm actually going to go over here, pull up the silence that I recorded for this session, which is here. And we can do learn. Okay, it learned it. We close this out. And it's going to use the same bit depth and same. And we're going to say just add Rx to the end of the name. You can see the progress happening over here. I think the most noticeable change from RX-7 is that you can now have several outputs. So for example, if you wanted to take a bunch of uh, WAV files and convert them to FLAC files or MP3s or something, you could uh, output to multiple different formats at the same time. You can also save module chains, which is pretty helpful uh, if you have settings that you uh, repeatedly apply. And you can see here the RX files have been added and they're right next to their non-RX counterparts, just as we asked it to. 
If you don't want to use the batch processor and you want to use something that's a little bit more hands-on, you can use something called composite view, which I actually didn't know about until I was researching this video. And it's one of the features that's been like recently improved in RX8. Here's the way it works. So you grab a bunch of files and they have to all be files that have the same sample rate. Uh, you grab them all, you bring them into RX and uh, normally they would appear in tabs. By the way, the number of tabs has now been upgraded to 32. So if like me, you frequently have 16 tabs open, now you can frequently have 32 tabs open. Um, but composite view is something that I think is going to be particularly helpful to sample creators because the sampling scenario is actually the perfect use case for uh, using it. Basically, a situation where you've got a bunch of takes or you know basically the same file, they were recorded under the same conditions, um, and you can do the same kind of processing to them. That's what composite view is designed for. So normally, if I wanted to do um, noise reduction on all of these samples, I would, you know, dial in whatever modules I want, make all my changes, go to the next one, do the exact same thing, go to the next one, do the exact same thing. And if I didn't want to do that, I had to use batch processing. With composite view, you can actually make changes to all these files at the same time. So I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to click this button that's to the right of all the tabs. And it says composite view up here, five files. And any changes that I make to this first file are going to extend to all of those files. So for example, I can go to spectral denoise, which is, you know, the old standby. Uh, and uh, I can click, well, I'm not going to click learn. I'm actually going to grab my silence from over here. And you can see it pop me right out of, I'm going to do learn. Then I'm going to close this out, go back into composite view. And now I can click render. And as you can see, it's taking a little longer than normal because it's actually applying that effect to five files. And if I go back out here, you can see they all have the little dot, as in they've all been modified. And I can listen to them individually. And in this way, I can like still touch things up a little bit, and I have a little bit more control than I did in the batch processing, uh, but I've still saved myself all of that labor of having to apply the same effect over and over again. Okay, so that's it. Those are the main new features that I think will be useful. There are a few other features that I didn't talk about. There's a loudness control, for example, which I think will be most useful for people who do radio productions and uh, podcasting. Essentially what it does is it makes sure that your podcast is at the right volume to be delivered to like public radio or to a major podcast distributor. Cool to know that you have it in your toolbox, but maybe not that useful for sampling. Advanced also has a wow and flutter module, which is really good for dealing with uh, vinyl and tape masters that um, have uh, pitch fluctuations and things like that. As I've mentioned throughout this, there are three versions of RX. There's uh, Elements, Standard, and Advanced. The version I've been showing in this video is, the, of course, the advanced version. It's got all the bells and whistles. There's a great page on the Isotope website where you can compare all the different versions and, uh, yeah, see which modules are present in which version. I certainly recommend having at least elements in your arsenal if you're going to be making samples because noise is such a consideration when you're going to be using many takes of the same instrument at the same time. And depending on your needs, you may want to upgrade to standard or advanced. Uh, yeah, take a look at the spreadsheet and yeah, make your own decisions. Uh, the module I personally use the most by far, like far and away, is Spectral Denoise. Everything else is really awesome and really nice. Spectral Denoise is absolutely essential. Like this video that you're watching right now, um, the audio went through severe denoising. Okay, I think that's it. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could hit like. And if you have not done so already, I highly recommend subscribing. I've got a lot more videos on the way. And actually, I think the next video is going to be a free sample. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. Okay, see you next time.